let's consider how to draw the sulfur dioxide Lewis structure. So the molecular formula for sulfur dioxide is SO2. That will tell us how many valence electrons that are available in this molecule for bonding. And we'll figure out, based on the octet rule, how many electrons those elements want to be surrounded by. And we'll use this to actually calculate how many bonding electrons uh, there might be for this molecule. So first we go to the periodic table and we find where oxygen and sulfur are. So oxygen is in the sixth column from the left. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. The same can be said for sulfur. So neon is the last noble gas before getting to sulfur. So after 10 electrons fill up that second shell around neon, um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six electrons around sulfur. So that means it also has six valence electrons. Um, also notice that sulfur is lower than oxygen in the periodic table. This means that sulfur, since it's lower or to the left of oxygen, is going to be more electropositive. It's less electronegative, which means it's a good candidate for the central atom of the molecule. So the available valence electrons for sulfur dioxide are 18 total. And the way that I arrive at this number is by um, multiplying the number of valence electrons for each element by the number of times that element is present in the molecule. There's only one sulfur. Um, the lack of a subscript after the S means that there's just one times six valence electrons gives me six. That's the count of valence electrons that come from that one sulfur. There are two oxygens. So since each one has six valence electrons, that means that there's 12 total. I just multiply two times six. I got the two from the subscript that follows the oxygen. That means that there's two oxygens in this molecule. Then I just added those up. So there's six valence electrons from the one sulfur, two from, 12 from the two oxygens, and I add those up to get 18 valence electrons. So uh, if we think about the octet rule and how each of the elements wants to have um, at least eight electrons surrounding it in its uh, valence shell, um, either through bonding or through just lone pairs of electrons, we end up getting 24. Now, a word of caution. We're going to find in this case that this gets violated, but um, the third row elements have access to the 3D orbital. Uh, so what this means is that um, we'll be able to do what's called expanded valence. We'll make Lewis structures that involve more than eight electrons if we need to, to minimize formal charge. So let's just kind of go through the math here, figure out how many bonds will be required to get to octets for everything, and then we'll start with that many bonds and see if there's a way to like reduce formal charge from there. Okay. So let's do a little bit of math and just uh, keep track of everything. So the difference between the electrons that are wanted and the electrons that are um, present in the valence shell of all the contributing elements, that is the number of bonding electrons. So this is the minimum number of electrons that are going to be involved in bonding so that we end up getting uh, all the octets filled. So Bonding electrons is just uh, 24 minus 18 is equal to 6. And also, uh, if we do, that's how many bonding electrons there are. If we divide that by 2, that's how many bonds minimum we're going to have in this molecule. So six electrons divided by two, that's three bonds. Now, yeah, I should point out the reason why we're dividing by two is because there's two bond, two electrons per bond. So let's get to the actual problem here. We're going to actually draw out the Lewis structure. And to do so, we need to figure out which element is going to be in the middle. Uh, the fact that the sulfur is drawn first is a good sign. The fact that there's multiple oxygens and just one sulfur is a good sign that sulfur is in the middle. 
And finally, the fact that sulfur is more electropositive than other stuff in the molecule indicates that sulfur is probably a good element to have in the middle. So here are two oxygens and a sulfur in the middle, and I just drew the valence electrons from each. So they each get started with six valence electrons surrounding them. And we're going to try to figure out what bonding is going to be necessary. And really all we're going to do is replace pairs of electrons with bonds whenever it's appropriate. So, okay, each of these has six dots around them, signifying six valence electrons. Great. We want to have octets for these oxygens. So let's take an electron from this oxygen and an electron from the sulfur and turn them into bonds and do the same for the other sulfur and oxygen. Sorry, for the other bonding pair of electrons between the same sulfur and the other oxygen. Okay, so now the number of electrons surrounding this oxygen and the other oxygen, because they're symmetric, uh, five lone pair electrons and two from this bond, so that's seven. We're not up to an octet. We need to do another bond. So I'm going to steal an electron from the sulfur, steal an electron from the oxygen, and create another bond. Do the same thing for the other oxygen. So I'm going to steal, uh, let's do that electron and that electron from sulfur and turn those into a bond. So I'm not creating or destroying electrons, I'm just reorganizing them and saying that they're going to be involved in a bond instead of being a lone pair on an oxygen. Okay, so at this point we now have eight electrons around each oxygen. We also have, uh, and the way I count that is by saying that each bond is two electrons, so that's two, four from bonds, and then four non-bonding electrons in these lone pairs, so that's eight total. There are two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around the sulfur. That's okay because sulfur is in the third row of the periodic table. So these elements, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, etc., they can access d orbitals and have more than eight electrons in their valence shells. These second row elements cannot. So you can't have more than eight electrons surrounding carbon. You can't have more than eight electrons surrounding nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine. They're stuck at eight. No more than eight. There's no more room in their orbitals. So there's nothing technically wrong with this. Let's figure out what the formal charges are for each element and make sure that this is the most reasonable Lewis structure. So the formal charge is calculated by subtracting the number of uh, non-bonding electrons and one half of the number of bonding electrons from the original uh, valence electrons that surround an element. It's probably easier to do it than to talk about it. So for oxygen, we started with six electrons and then we uh, are going to look at how many electrons are actually surrounding the oxygen and the bonding picture that we just put together. So that's four non-bonding electrons and one half of the bonding electrons. Okay, so all I've done here is I said we started with six electrons around oxygen. That's where that six came from. And now when I'm looking at the, bo at the bonding picture that we have, there are four non-bonding electrons. That's this four. And then there are four, two, four from the two bonds, uh, bonding electrons that are uh, in the surrounding this oxygen that are participating in the, the valence shell of this oxygen. And uh, I'm going to divide that number by two. And basically, all this is saying is that I'm accounting for in each bond one electron being associated with this oxygen, one electron being associated with this. Sulfur, it's just an accounting convention. It's not necessarily anything particularly uh, physically relevant. Um, so if I calculate this all the, all the way, it's going to be 6 minus 4 plus 2. So that's 6 minus 6, so it's 0. So the formal charge for this oxygen is 0. How about the, and this other oxygen is going to have the same formal charge because it's symmetric. It has the same overall bonding picture as this oxygen. What about for sulfur? Sulfur, like oxygen, started with six valence electrons, so we have six for sulfur. And then um, there are two non-bonding electrons 
on the sulfur, so that's two. And there are two, four, six, eight bonding electrons in those four bonds. So inside these parentheses, this would be two plus four, so that's six. You subtract that six from the original six valence electrons and you get zero again. So the overall formal charge for these elements is zero. We wouldn't want to change the bonding because we would disrupt those really low formal charges. Um, I don't have to do these considerations that much unless I have a third row element, at which point I have to do them. Uh, if you have elements like bonding that's just about like hydrogen and the second row elements, you don't have to do this sort of uh, stuff very often. Sometimes you do, but it's, it's unusual. Let's make sure that I'm not doing anything nuts. So one thing that would be uh, terrible, and I have to redo the problem, is if the number of valence electrons in the structure that we've drawn is different than the number of valence electrons that we started with. So we started with 18 valence electrons. And let's see if we actually ended up with 18 valence electrons. So there's one, two, three, four, five lone pairs. So that's 10 valence electrons from the lone pairs. And then we have two, four, six, eight valence electrons uh, in the bonds. So 10 plus eight, that's 18 bonding, or sorry, 18 valence electrons overall. So we didn't do anything weird. We didn't write more electrons or less electrons than there actually are. Another important aspect of this drawing is that we went through the formal charges. We found that each of these elements has a zero formal charge. So the overall charge on this species is zero. And as written, it has a zero charge. So again, our charge is consistent with what we were starting with, with just the uh, formula. Um, one thing that we calculated that we ended up doing differently was we said that we'd need at least three bonds. And we have more than three bonds, four. Um, technically, it would be not violating an octet to do this. So if we took those two bonding electrons and turned them into a lone pair, then that would fulfill everybody's octet. Sulfur would have an octet as well instead of having 10 electrons around it. But now the formal charges have changed. If we look at, it, at this structure, the formal charge for oxygen would be 6 minus, now there's 6 electrons in its shell. And, sorry, in its non-bonding electrons. And there are two in this bond, so now it just has two bonding electrons. If I redo all this math, I end up getting that it has a negative one charge. If I redo the math for sulfur, I get also a charge, but this one's going to be positive one. And uh, it has two non-bonding electrons, and it has six bonding electrons. So it's going to have a formal charge of plus one when you do all the math. So we like the other structure better with more bonding. Yes, it does put this 10 number of electrons around the sulfur, but that's okay because it's in the third row and it minimizes charges. Sorry, that should be a plus one instead of a minus, sorry, instead of a plus five. So there you go. That's why I favor the other structure with more bonding. And that's why I don't stick with the three bond structure because the four bond structure ends up minimizing formal charge. So let me get back to that. Now that we've settled on a structure, we can figure our Lewis structure. Now we can figure out what the geometry of this molecule will be and predict it using a valence electron pair valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or VSEPR. So really all you do with VSEPR is you look and see how many places the electrons surrounding an, uh, a particular nucleus are in. So I look at this uh, double bond, that's one place where electrons around the sulfur are located. I look at this other double bond, that's another place where the electrons around the sulfur are located. 
and then I look at this lone pair, that's a third place. So this uh, sulfur has three places where electrons, valence electrons, are, are located. Um, this corresponds to a trigonal planar geometry. So, you know, three places um, corresponds to a parent geometry that's trigonal planar with 120 degrees between, uh, like for the bond angle. So like the OSO bond angle should be 120 degrees. Now, uh, you don't really call this trigonal planar. That's the parent geometry. Since there's no element here in the third place, it's not going to be trigonal planar in the strict sense. You'd call this bent because electrons are filling one of the positions. So let's see what this looks like in 3D. So I'm going to calculate uh, using an online calculator the structure and we can take a look at the 3D geometry. So this is what the 3D structure of SO2 looks like. Um, it's not linear, it's not a straight line, it's bent. It's got this 120 degree angle here and yeah, that's basically how you do the problem. Um, if you had to sketch this, you would draw an angle in the OSO um, bond. 